Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian, and today I'm going to be talking about a few questions like, why am I talking about bodybuilding and fitness? You suck. True. Uh, what do you have to offer? Do you even have experience? So we'll get into that. And then thirdly, why would anyone watch or listen to you? Now, I have thoughts on all of these, so we'll just go ahead and get right into it. So, why am I talking about uh, bodybuilding and fitness, generally? Uh, because I like it. Uh, so, that's fair. You know, uh, I don't have many people to talk to it about in real life, like my friends. Most of them don't work out. My roommate does. He does body weight stuff, so that's no fun to talk about. Um, I think working out exercise is great for your mental health. I think it's great to share. It was great to get stuff out there, and uh, I think lifting in general likely has saved my life. You know, I deal with some mental health issues, and uh, it's far and above the absolute best thing that I've ever found uh, that's actually helped, you know, day-to-day -day mental health. Uh, it's fun. It's interesting, and it can't hurt to add to the natural community. Uh, I don't think... There's enough natties out there talking about it, and so I want to add to it. Why not, right? It can't hurt. Um, so that's, you know, why am I talking about it? I want to, you know. Pretty simple. Uh, what do you, me, what do I have to offer? Do I even have any experience? Uh, you know, like, you can look at me and be like, oh, you're not even that big. Well, that's true. I'm not that big. <clears throat> uh, I think we all have different experiences uh, and different, you know, life experiences, so we can relate to people uh, to varying degrees, right? Uh, for instance, and you might notice me looking down, I'm looking at my notes, I have notes in front of me, because uh, I don't want to memorize a 15-minute video. Now, we might be able to uh, relate to each other in varying degrees. Like for instance, uh, I may not be able to, look, I love natural hypertrophy, but I may not be able to relate to him as much. Um, why? Well, he's very tall. I'm not very tall. He's beautiful. I'm not very beautiful. Uh, he's got a great physique. He's been doing this for a long time, seriously, and he, you know, is great. Uh, also, though, just like life shit, like, he's really intelligent. I believe he's got like a master's degree in philosophy or something like that. I don't know really what he does, but uh, I love listening to him talk about philosophy. Uh, I'm interested in that as well, but I'm, you know, I'm not like him. I'm a college dropout, uh, so maybe I can't relate to that. I know he's mentioned before that, you know, not to put him on blast or anything, but you know, like a lot of creators, uh, can make decent money, or, like, in their personal lives, they're, they're like, they don't worry about that. That's not me, man. I'm poor as fuck. Uh, I'm super poor. So, that's stressful. You know, some people, so, you know, maybe you can't relate to, like, having the best diet, buying the best food, getting the best nutrition, because it's hard to afford that sometimes. Uh, but yeah, you know, that's one reason, right? Like, we can all relate to people differently. You know, he's French. That's a little lame. Uh, I'm like a quarter French, so I'm like only a quarter is lame, but also much less jacked, so I think it makes me more lame in the end. Um, now, my experience lifting, coming to that, is uh, it's multiple years, right? Uh, and I will put out a video also on just my training history, uh, personally, but... Um, a quick breakdown, you know, there was like a few years in high school, a uh, couple years at some point, a couple years at another point. So out of the last, you know, 13, 14 years, since I was 13 or 14, um, maybe seven have been on, seven off, eight on, six off, something like that. Um, and I think I, my perspective, unique lived experience and perspective allows me to like uh, kind of chime in, talk about, like, lifting with mental health issues, you know, depression, anxiety, um, you know, things like that, and, uh, staying consistent, you know, I've been inconsistent, uh, for life reasons, uh, injuries, you know, I have a bad knee, torn ACL, meniscus, um, and then just life shit that happens, and, 
it can't always be consistent, uh, but you can try. And so that's uh, just part of what I want to share, and I think I can offer perspective on. Uh, now, I also would, you know, want to share my personal philosophies, uh, the takeaways that I've gotten from lifting, my, uh, you know, any knowledge from research that, not that I've conducted, that I've read or uh, experienced myself, you know, so that's what I may have to offer. So not much. Um, and then the last part, you know, who would even watch this or listen to me? Well, I ask myself that a lot. Um, nobody. But uh, realistically, though, you know, anyone who can relate to experiences I've had, um, you know, anyone who struggled with their life, struggled with consistency, mental health issues, you know, whatever, or just people who want to see my perspective. You see, um, I watch and listen to a lot of people, right? A lot of bodybuilders, a lot of uh, all natural, but, uh, because I'm interested, I get like obsessed about things in a probably unhealthy way. Uh, but you know, so I may be interested in something and just like obsess about it. I like to get as much information as I can I like to get as much perspective as I can. So I watch a lot of different guys who get like hundreds of views to like, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of views. I just think it's cool. You know, it's fun. So if anyone who's like me, who gets obsessive or like who wants to see what everyone thinks and I'll just throw my shit into the mix and, you know, see if it sticks, basically. Um, I'll be watching through the people I watch and get to the like end of the day. Like not everyone uploads every day, this and that. You finish your two or three videos or five videos a day and you're like, man, I wish, you know, there was something else I could watch, see someone else's perspective or this or that. And uh, so I'll just add stuff into the mix. And again, I'm looking down at my and my notes. You can see my thinning hair. Um, not from steroids, just from bad genetics. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, who would watch this and me? You know, I'm only maybe intermediate, maybe like beginner intermediate. Um, you know, I, like I said, get obsessed about things. I watch other intermediates. And this isn't like to shame on a bit or your talk shit. They all have better physiques than me. Uh, but, you know, people like based on bodybuilding or stand strength or natty life, uh, you know, I think they have great information. I like listening to their experiences and, you know, seeing their physique updates and what they're doing and what they like and what they've learned. And that's just fun. It's fun and interesting. So, uh, that's why I want to share what I have. Um, I think it's good to hear from newer nannies or from people all along the spectrum um, of like time frame of, of training career duration. You know, people like it one year, two years, three, five, six, eight, eleven. Like everyone has different things to offer, and you can get a more realistic time frame of the kind of progression that we experience can be documented and then that you may be able to expect, um, you know, depending on how similar or dissimilar you are to certain people, um, or how you train and, and how seriously you take it and all that. Uh, it's just good to have a variety. Um, and I also, well, here's one thing. Uh, there's something uh, because I, like, I get obsessed about things. I'm currently, uh, learning a, another language and there's a thing called the intermediate plateau. And I believe this happens in weightlifting as well. I think this actually happens in just about any skill, uh, or anything that you have to develop that takes a long time and that takes expertise and practice and consistency, something called the intermediate plateau. And so, in language learning, it's basically like if you learn the top 500 most used words in a language, the top 500 most used words are going to account for like 50% of the language, right? That you'll hear or read or speak. And then you learn 2,000 words, and that's like 80% of the language, right? And then you know, you learn 5,000 words, and that's like 90% of the language. Then you learn 10,000 words, and it's 95%. And, you, you know, 
Keep going. 20,000, you're at 97%. 50,000, you're at 98%. 100,000 words, you're at 99.5%. Um, and people hit like this plateau because you start off and you can't understand anything. You get to a point where you can understand, you know, 50%, 80%. That's the first few thousand words. And then, you know, 90% is pretty good. But you feel stuck, like, because you got there after 5,000 words, and that was relatively quick, you know, you get the basics out of the way, and then there's the next 20,000 words to get you closer to, like, fluent and not having to worry about it, um, and so I think lifting's just like that, like, people start out, you get your noob gains, right, uh, the first six months, a year, two years, you get some great changes, you look great, you get most of your gains during that time, generally. Uh, and then after that, you're an intermediate for a long time. Like, you might be a beginner for a year or two, intermediate for... And yeah, these are all arbitrary categories, more or less anyway. But for the purposes of talking about it, you know, uh, you might be an intermediate for five years. And then you might be advanced after year 10 or, you know, whatever doesn't really matter. Point is, there's a long intermediate plateau, so most people who stick with it are going to be intermediates most of the time. Then they may be advanced for a while, and life might happen, or uh, who knows. Anyway, that's uh, where I was getting at with the intermediate plateau. It occurs in language learning as well as lifting, and I think, like I said, a lot of other skills, uh, anything that takes time, passion, and and practice so let's add more to that and uh help people get over that intermediate plateau or just keep people motivated who knows or keep myself motivated is a huge important thing of course um keep myself accountable it helps to be accountable to i don't know strangers on the internet i guess uh like I said, though, I like watching a lot of people, but I believe uh, natties should watch natties. I don't really care what other people watch, um, but I only watch natties. I don't. The only person who does drugs that I know that I watch is like Mike Isretel, Uh and that's not because of his physiques, because he's a researcher and like an expert in his field and has really great information, uh, regardless of that. But you know, I'm not watching, um, you know, Sarms Goblins or you know, fucking roided up juice heads. That's, I'm just not interested in that. I don't want to look like that. I don't, I don't know why they want to look like that. I think it's, you know, also mental health issues. Uh, but regardless, I don't want to watch them. I don't care for their information or their experiences necessarily. It's going to be so vastly different, uh, than a natural's experience. I don't see what kind of value I can get from that. So, uh, I think Natty should watch Natty's. And lastly, why would anyone watch or listen to me? Um, I just want to spread encouragement, positivity, uh, hype that natty statty and, uh, encourage people to keep it, uh, because you're going to be better for it in the long run health wise and, uh, which in general, I think is better, um, and to have fun. Uh, I just want to have fun and I hope other people have fun. And, uh, that's, you know, a big part of why I lift. I, do think it's fun. I enjoy it. Um, I enjoy talking about it. Like I said, I think talking about it's fun. I think sharing your passion with people is fun and your experiences and, and all that. It's fun. That's simple. I do things. You do things because they're fun ultimately. And like, yeah, you do things that are hard, but you enjoy them. And just because they're hard doesn't mean they're not fun, right? Like, you could play a hard game of football or pick up basketball or whatever with your friends, and you might be, like, out of breath and dying at the end and sweating, and you might lose or whatever, but, like, it's still fun, right? Bodybuilding takes a long time. It's hard. Not every day, you know, you don't want to be there every single day necessarily, or you might be sore, you might get injured, you might, you know, it might take away from time that you would rather be lazy or, I don't know, spend doing other things. But, like, at the end of the day, it's fun that's why I do it. I like, you know, like people say, lifting heavy shit and putting it down. It's fun. And it's fun to see uh, myself get bigger and stronger and uh, look better. So that's about all that I have. 
Uh, so that's what I'm talking about, bodybuilding and fitness. I think it's fun. I, I want to share my perspective. Uh, I like hearing other people's perspective. Uh, what do I have to offer? Experience. Just my personal experience. Um, being consistent, you know, learning about consistency, struggling with mental health issues, life shit, and, and trying to keep it going. And then uh, who would watch or listen? You know, anyone like me who just gets obsessed, likes to likes to dig deep and watch people, uh, other natties. Um, anyone who just wants to have fun lifting and shit, you know, let's get out there and get it. Uh, I think it's fun. So uh, with that, thank you for checking it out if you did, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.